Warning, MF Uncensored contains adult language and discussion. Listener discretion is advised. We're a couple of misfits. We're a couple of misfits. What's the matter with misfits? That's where we fit in. We're not that being dilly. Don't go around with it. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to MF Uncensored. Don't forget, if you guys are listening to us on the go, you can find us on Podbean, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, basically anywhere you guys get your podcast. You can also find more of our content on our website, themisfitfaction.com. There you'll find links to not only this show, but our other shows like the Multiverse Fancast and Cinematic Adventures. You'll also find links to some of our articles, our reviews, and of course, our Misfit Faction store where we have new uh, materials, new things every month. So make sure you guys check that out. That's the MisfitFaction.com. I'm one of your hosts, Paul, and I'm doing the intro for you guys today. And we have an awesome episode planned for you. We have in the studio today, or well, in the Zoom studio, as it were, we have psychic hypnotist and uh, performer John Moyer. Now, John was so gracious because uh, we say it in the interview, but we had had some scheduling conflicts and he was super accommodating with me because I think I got stuck with a work thing at the time and he was so happy and so grateful to, to reschedule with me. So John was a lot of fun and just interesting because I am not, again, I think I mentioned it in another episode, I am not a big believer in hypnosis. I'm not a big believer in mentalists and things of those natures. So to talk to somebody who's just so approachable and so open to uh, to skepticism was a lot of fun. Before we get started, don't forget, guys, if you are looking to start your very own podcast, maybe you guys have been listening to us for the last couple of months, maybe you guys have always wanted to, but you're not sure how to get started, where to begin. If you guys are looking to do that, make sure you guys check out our website, podbean.com slash misfitfaction to get a free month of podcasting on us. Again, that's a thank you from us to you guys. And we're always looking for brand new shows, brand new content. So if you guys are looking to start your own show, let us know. Get in touch with us. We are always looking to make the Misfit Faction even more fun and even bigger. So please reach out to us. Or maybe you guys have your own business or online service that you guys offer. Sponsorship and uh, advertising is a big part of owning any sort of business. So if you guys go to sponsorship.podbean.com slash Misfit Faction, you guys can get $100 worth of free advertising, not just on our podcast, but podcasts all over the world. So again, that's sponsorship.podbean.com slash Misfit Faction. And obviously, I cannot start an episode so without talking about Ray's Energy from Rep Sports, guys, we've been using Ray's here for months now. We love it. We get our monthly shipments. We get all sorts of things from them because they are just awesome. Not only their energy drink, Ray's Energy, but also we do their protein supplements. I've done some of their other testosterone and energy supplements. So make sure you guys check them out. That's Rep Sports, R-E-P-P Sports.com and use the code Misfit89 at checkout to get a discount on your order. And without further ado, here's Mr. John Moyer. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of MF Uncensored. Don't forget, if you guys are listening to us on the go, you can find us on Podbean, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and basically anywhere that says podcast on it, you'll probably find our show. You can even ask Alexa to play our show, but she might not want to because, well, that's her choice. But I am uh, super honored today because I've We've had some very interesting guests on the show, some very unique voices in Hollywood, in authors, and all sorts of things. But this one, this one I was really excited for. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to explain why in a second, because I love seeing the world in a different way. I love seeing other perspectives about the world that we enjoy and the world that we all share. And this guy, I feel like he's going to bring a, a different level of perception. And this is Mr. John Moyer. John, how are you today? I am outstanding and happy to be here. So and, thank uh, you. Very quick shout out to John for being super flexible because unfortunately I had to reschedule our first <laughs> interview and he was, I, I felt terrible emailing him and he wrote back the nicest email. He's like, no, it's all good. It happens. Don't worry. Like what? next week, same time. And I was like, same, yeah. bat, same bat time, same bat channel. I love it. I, 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 I have to be appreciative that, that, that some people, you know, have to leave their house to go out and, and work. And so, you know, it's, it, it just, when I'm home all the time, it's all good. My, I've got my schedule here. And so I was happy to reschedule. So it worked out. Well, we do appreciate it. You know, I really, I really wanted to make this interview happen. After we got connected through our mutual friend, Steve Joyner, he, I was reading about and learning about John and I, I feel like he's going to be an interesting conversation just, just based on what he does. So John, just tell my audience a little bit about yourself. I'm well, currently right now, I and this is kind of where I've landed in life through a, a very interesting path, but I'm a professional hypnotist. And I started doing, well, I spent years doing stand-up comedy, over 20 years as a stand-up comedian. 
And from that, I kind of segued into stage hypnosis because I figured it was all, hey, it was about being on stage and being funny. I just, you know, now I just had to figure out how to bring people up on stage and hypnotize them. And uh, I, I, I did that, you know, toured all over the country for corporate events and universities, performed for Royal Caribbean Cruise Line. And from that, though, I, I, I by happenstance, had a YouTube channel that I created for hypnosis and meditation content. And that took off that I'm extremely grateful for. And that's primarily where I put all my focus now, just creating content, hypnosis and medi meditation content for my, for my YouTube channel. That's incredible. So let, let's, we'll start at the beginning then. You were a stand-up yeah. comedian, you know, obviously being on stage and interacting with people, I'm sure there's a similarity, but also an incredible difference. So why don't you yeah. tell me a little bit about your stand-up comedy first, so then we can relate it to the transition to something much different. Yeah. I Well, I got started in stand-up comedy when, when I was in college. There was a, you know, I went to theater and film school mm -hmm. and uh, graduated with um, a degree in, in, in film, theater and film with a screenwriting emphasis. But while I was in college, there was a comedy club in where I, I went to school and the, you know, they had open mic night and I went out and did an open mic night and I got laughs and it was all kind of in the same wheelhouse to me, you know, uh, screenwriting and entertainment and stand up comedy. So when I graduated from uh, college, I went on the road and was was doing stand up comedy. The kind of thing that got interesting for me is when you're in film school, they teach you that all drama is conflict if you're writing a script. Right. So there's not going to be any home alone if the kid's not left home alone and there's not burglars trying to break into the house. So right. I kind of applied that template to you know, my stand up and my jokes. I talked about me, you know, my wife, kids, and stuff that was going on in my life. And I looked at it the way there was more drama and more conflict than that was more for me to joke about and be, you know, funny on stage. The challenge that I had was while I was getting laughs on stage, I was in a very uh, dark place and incredibly unhappy, you know, as, as an individual. You know, consequently wound up going through a divorce, single parent with, you know, two young kids. And of course, you know, I'm dating all of the wrong women because right. that was obviously more fodder for, you know, for, for stand up. And I stand up got to be kind of a, a unique thing, you know, in the mid 2000s because the industry really kind of changed radically. And that's that's a whole other discussion. And so I was unhappy per, per, personally and then kind of unhappy you know, professionally as well. And I was performing at an event. It was an all day event. There were different activities happening. And when I performed, you know, the venue that I was in was maybe half full, you know, it was, it was okay. And what I didn't realize was after me, they had booked a hypnotist. Okay. And, you know, while the audience was half full for my show, it was like standing room only for the hypnotist. And I, I stuck around and I, and I watched that and, and, you know, it was a great show. People wanted to come up on stage. People were hypnotized. And after the fact, you know, they were throwing money hand over fist at him to buy his merchandise. You know, mm -hmm. he had CDs for weight loss and stop smoking and, and all that stuff. And I went, you know what? I could do that. Of course, you know, everybody says that. But, you know, I, I had the ability to be on stage. I just now had to learn how to figure out how to hypnotize people. And I went through a training course and and figured it out. And the advantage that I had, because I was already doing stand-up comedy, I was able to go back to the, the event bookers and the event managers and, and all of these people and say, hey, I've got a whole new show now. So I wound up being able to take off. And that actually really just, you know, took off to great heights for me. And, you know, instead of driving 12 hours to do some, you know, hell bar in some place in the middle of Montana, you know, to be put up at a motel six overnight. I was being flown first class to do really fun events. And that's kind of how it all went from the transition from stand up comedy to stage hypnotist. That's crazy. Like, it, it's funny you say that because it, it's interesting. You had a unique advantage that a lot of people who, you know, try and get into this line of work do. You are used to being on stage. You're used to that fast pace. Stand-up comedians are the most interesting people to interview or talk to and not to yeah. say anything about anybody, but because well, it's they- because they're dysfunctional in a lot of ways, but- <laughs> But they put the fun in dysfunctional at least. Yes, they put the fun in dysfunctional, yeah. But I find that when I do interviews with comedians especially, it's very fast. If I'm not yeah. on my game, like I have to, I have to be quick and I have to- realize, wait, that was a joke. I got to laugh. Hold on. Now I got to counter it. <laughs> but yeah. I, I find that stand-up comedians are very interesting to, to interview. And 
the fact that it's almost like you wanted to become like a world bodybuilding champion, but you were already going to the gym. So yeah. as opposed to somebody who's like, I can do that, but I've never set foot in the gym. So I, I like the analogy that you had this unique opportunity and you, and you took advantage of it. And I think that's really cool. So I am not familiar with how to become a hypnotist. I've seen hypnotists before and I, I always take a lot of, you know, you and I discuss what I do for a living beforehand and uh, you know, I'm, I'm the kind of person that probably takes everything with a big grain of salt and <laughs> looks through a very, yeah. not a, not a very darker, like a darker mirror, but just a more realistic one. So yeah. I have no clue what training to be a hypnotist is involves or what it's like. Can you kind of walk me through that a little bit without, you know, obviously giving away any trade secrets? Uh, well, it, it's, there's no, it's not like, you know, magicians. And the, well, the thing is, is that, you know, hypnot, hypnotism is really kind of an interesting area because you know, there's no, you know, I mean, formal training uh, in a way there is, you know, when I first started doing it, I just, I took a stage hypnosis class, mm -hmm. you know, and it's, it's not really like an official thing. It's not like you're going and, you know, getting a law degree or, you know, anything like that. Right. So in, in theory, you know, I mean, people, geez, people watch YouTube videos to figure out how to, you know, do, you know, do hypnosis, but there's a lot of layers to it. And there's a lot of things you can have to learn and understand. Now, when I wanted to take it to the next level, I did, I took, it was a hundred hour certification course with a national wow. guild of hypnotists. So I could have a, you know, a nice fancy, you know, certificate and, you know, and, and stuff on my wall. But for that, you know, I, I just basically, I did all of that for, you know, obviously for the education purpose, so I could, you know, be better at what I do, you know, on stage, I wasn't necessarily so interested in, you know, hanging up a shingle and having a hypnotherapy, you know, practice. Um, but, you know, it's just kind of figuring out or, you know, just kind of understanding how the mind works. And it's, it's basically, it's like, you've got this tool belt with all these different tools in that you just kind of know how to apply and use depending on the person, depending on the situation. Wow. Like I, I can only imagine the amount of, of human just empathy and connection that you have to create just to talk to somebody, you know, because people who are looking for hypnosis are obviously looking for help in some regards, or they're annoying college kids that are like, you can't hypnotize yeah. me. Like, yeah, exactly. So yeah. tell me a little bit about your first experiences you know, moving from stage comedy to, to hypnotism well, on stage. The, the funny thing was, is that when I did stand up, I mean, I had performed you know, in, in front of audiences of thousands of people, you know, I had been on, I had an appearance once on, on Fox news when Geraldo had a show Geraldo at large. And that was probably the, the most nervous I had ever been, you know, you're in front of a worldwide audience. But when I first tried to do practice, you know, doing hypnosis, you know, the, the, the woman I was dating at the time, uh, she had some teenage kids. So the teenage kids brought over their teenage friends. And that was probably the scariest thing for me, just being in front of like 10, you know, 16 year old kids, you know, and uh, here I am, I'm not really knowing what I'm doing. I've got like a, a script in front of me, you know, and I'm like reading it. And then all of a sudden, when you see it happen, when you see somebody experience hypnosis, you're like, oh my God, this, this really works. And then, I mean, that was the scaredest I had been up to that point, but then what I did to kind of test it out. I teamed up with a comedy friend of mine. We got a venue. It was a theater. And, you know, we just kind of put on our own show. He was going to MC for me. And then I was going to bring people up on stage and, and hypnotize him. And man, that was, that was scary because, you know, now you've got, uh, uh, you're in front of an audience and, you know, it's like, you've got all these spinning plates, you know, you, you want to hypnotize people. And, but at the same time, it's knowing how to, you know, keep the flow of the show going and make it interesting. And, so, and it was one of just one of those things, obviously, you know, with, with more practice, mm -hmm. you know, I was able to kind of figure out what I was, uh, what I was doing. So, and, and I had the, the second, the most second experience of being nervous for me, because obviously when we had the lockdown, you know, nobody was doing any shows mm -hmm. and I, you know, I was fortunate because, you know, I, I had my YouTube channel to focus on. So I had some offers to do some show and some invitations to do some shows, as, you know, as things open back up, but I, I did my first show in two years last Friday night at a university nice. and I was, I was more nervous going into it, but it was funny that like the day of, I actually got excited. And, you know, once I stepped on stage, it was, you know, it did all come back to me. So it, it, it stuck in my subconscious mind in that regard. So do you think that, that people now, especially the, the general, the general 
outlook of people is a lot less optimistic than it was before the the pandemic. Yeah. yeah. And you know, you did your first show. Did did you find that the atmosphere was a little bit different? Like people were just so like almost desperate for entertainment or to, to feel better. Did you feel any of that or was that, or is it still just a regular show? It was a regular show. I mean, the, the, the university I did at, they still weren't at full capacity. Right. So, but I mean, we still had, we, I did two shows for them last, uh, last Friday night and they were both, you know, they were excited and they were fun audiences and they were just, you know, they were ready to have a good time, but you know, you, you're right because obviously, you know, people have been through a lot the last couple of years and, when people were stuck at home and then they were stressed and they had all these challenges that they were coping with, you know, the one nice thing that I was able to kind of be there with my YouTube content to be able to, you know, help them and, and seeing the, and, and hearing the experiences of people, you know, literally from all over the world about how, you know, I've been able to share something with them that is, has benefited them is to me is far more exciting and far more energetic and something I'm far more passionate about than, you know, than going out and, and doing shows. Cause when you do a show, you're there for people, you know, an hour, 90 minutes, and you know, you can show them a lot in that period of time about how the mind works and it can be really fun, but you know, I've, I've really enjoyed the long lasting, you know, experience for people when doing hypnosis. I, I love that. You know, we, we have three podcasts on our network that we, we all uh, work together on and, you know, people ask, you know, like, why do you, why do you podcast? Cause you know, it ain't to make money. Like that's just yeah. the, the realistic yeah. part. You know, you, people think like the Joe Rogans and stuff like that, who make, you know, ridiculous money to share their experiences. Me, I love hearing people's stories. I love talking to people that just yeah. see the world a little bit differently. And, and I like how, you know, you use your YouTube channel to a similar effect where you were able to still impact so many people, which we're going to talk about your YouTube channel in a little bit. But I kind of want to know, like, what is what does your average show look like? You just mentioned that it goes for about an hour, hour and a half, you know, and when people think hypnosis, they think they think the silly things first and foremost. Yeah. They think like, uh, yeah. oh, he's going to make that guy dance around like a chicken and stuff like that. Yeah. But uh, what, what kind of format does your show typically have? Well, you know, the first thing that obviously you have to have rapport with the audience. Right. So, right. you know, when you when you go in there <clears throat> and, you know, of course, you know, there might be people that are skeptical or there might be people that are a little put off like, oh, man, I'm you know, I'm I'm not going to do that. But when you go up on stage, the, the you know, you do the structure of a, a typical hypnosis show is you have what's called the pre-talk where you stand up, you know, in front of the audience and let them know what they can es expect and let them know how it's going to be. And, you know, encourage them, you know, to participate, to come up as volunteers. So the things that I lay out for people is, you know, what the experience is going to be. It's going to be entertaining. Everybody's going to have a lot of fun, whether you're on the stage or whether the audience, but it's also going to be enlightening because you're going to be able to witness how the mind works and how powerful the mind, you know, can be. And there's tremendous physical benefits, not to mention other than the mind, you know, with hypnosis, there's tremendous physical benefits that, you know, that people experience. And, you know, I let them know we're going to do some silly stuff. We're going to do some goofy stuff, but, you know, it's, it's not anything you're going to be embarrassed about. So, and, and, and on top of that, as kind of putting the carrot out there, you know, and it's not just dangling from a stick because they actually do get the carrot at the end of the show. But I let people know, look, if you have a goal that you want to achieve, think about that. When you come up here tonight, we're going to make it possible. So when you leave here after the show, you're going to be able to achieve your goals, you know, and that's a big motivating factor for, you know, for people to come up on stage. And then of course that, you know, they come up on stage, let the volunteers know a little bit more what to expect and how it's going to work. Said, so you know, lay down some, you know, some ground rules and have them close their eyes. And then I go through a hypnotic induction and uh, they get hypnotized. And after that, we start to do various skits where you put a suggestion, you know, in the volunteer's mind. And the thing about hypnosis is your mind can't tell the difference between what's real and what's not when you're hypnotized, right? Okay. So it's, it's like when you have a dream, mm -hmm. you know, no matter how bizarre the dream is, no matter how strange the dream is, you accept that as real. So you're kind of having that same experience on stage where your mind is telling you that something is real. And consequently, you respond, you know, accordingly, whether it's, you know, a change of the, in, you know, in the, in the temperature or whether, you know, the volunteers are seeing something that's not really there. They're feeling something, you know, that's not really there. Or, you know, you make some new connections in your mind, tell them they can't remember their name or they, you know, they forget something and, and you just utilize all of that, you know, as a, as as various skits, you know, through the course of the show. Oh, that's really cool. Like it, it, it's interesting to imagine the human mind's like one of the most powerful things in the whole universe. So to, to, to hear you talking about how it's not even a manipulation for you, it's just expanding 
that connection. So I, I really enjoy that that sort of thing. Now, I'm, I'm imagining that a lot of people come up with specific goals. Like you mentioned, you want them to come up with, uh, here's what I, I want you to think about, I want you to envision. So what are some of the, the biggest success stories? I'm sure you've heard from people afterwards who are yeah. like, man, after your show, this happens. Yeah, one of, the, one of the most interesting ones that stand out for me was when I was on the cruise ship. And I had a woman, and, and the, the, the thing about being on the cruise ship is, you know, I would do two shows in one night. Mm-hmm. And, the, you know, that's all I would do. It was just one night, two shows. But I might be on the, you know, the, the entire cruise. So you're seeing the people right. that went to the show. And several days after the show, I had a woman that came up to me. She says, was that your show? I was this person on stage. You know, I remembered her. She said, look, I originally had no intentions of coming up on stage. But when you said that, you know, you were going to help us achieve our goals, that did it for me. And she said, look, I'm a chocoholic. And it's kind of an out of, out of control thing for me. And, you know, we didn't get, she didn't really talk about specific details, but it was enough that, Clearly, this woman's life was dictated by chocolate. She goes, and I know I've just needed to stop chocolate, stop eating, you know, so much chocolate. So she goes, that was my goal. I came up on stage. That was my goal to do it. She goes, it's been three days and I haven't had any chocolate at all. There's chocolate literally all over the ship. You know, it's a, it's a cruise ship. It's yeah, it's yeah, all yeah. you can eat. Right. And she goes, thank you. This was amazing. And, and that story st- stood out in my mind. And, you know, that might have been three or four years ago. And it was just a couple of months ago. She reached out to me on Facebook and she said, I don't know if you remember me, but I'm the woman that stopped eating chocolate because of you. And it's been three years and it's stuck. It's, you know, the, you know, the entire time. So, I mean, that's you, when you think about eating chocolate. Okay. How is, is, is that really, you know, in the grand scheme of things compared to what some people's, you know, challenges are, but, you know, I, I hear, you know, especially via YouTube, how people's lives you know, have, have turned around for them, how they've been able to, you know, overcome really challenging, you know, situations. I've got a a hypnosis program for overcoming heartbreak. And I hear how that's benefited people, you know, how people have been able to feel a lot less stressed and feel, you know, more empowered to take back control um, of their lives. So it's, it's, it's such a small thing when you think about the, you know, just our thoughts. And I, and I, you know, I tell people, the hardest, easiest thing you will ever do is change your mind. And it's hard because people can't believe it's so easy. But once you tap into that aspect of the subconscious mind, you, you know, you can literally be able to, to rewire yourself to completely change your life. That's incredible. And I, I like how, even though you, like you, this lady who overcame the chocolate addiction, A, she sounds like she was so grateful and appreciative, which is always nice. Like it's always great to, yeah. to, to hear yeah. that and hear success stories. But I like how, even though in the grand scheme of things, like you said, you know, chocolate is it the worst thing? But it to her it was like yeah. to, to her it was yeah. like to her it was just as bad as some of the other afflictions that people deal with. You know, me personally, yeah. I, I dealt with a lot of body image issues and a lot of bad eating habits to the point where I had to go see somebody and speak to somebody about it because it was getting to a point where I was so unhappy. And now I'm at this point where you know my wife and I just had a, a, a wonderful dinner, a little little one, one one glass of wine. I had to you know I had the interview tonight. I don't, I don't do more than one on interview nights, but uh, I, I love hearing I love hearing success stories, especially and hearing people who overcome things. And yeah, some people will be like, well, it's just chocolate. Like I could stop chocolate. When your body is so hardwired and your mind so hardwired yeah. for something, you know that that's the biggest thing. So I, I yeah. And, you know, and I was well, gonna, go ahead. Well, it's like, you know, there was one time I was performing for, I think it was the Fraternal Order of Eagles. And, you know, I was at this Eagles Lodge. This is when I just first started to do it. And uh, man, these, these were some, these were some rough, rowdy people, man. They, they, they you know, these, these people like to party. And, um, you know, there were one of the things that, that I did at the end of the show, when you're, you know, when you're waking people up, sometimes you'll give what they call post-hypnotic suggestions. Okay. So where you're telling, you know, they're giving them a suggestion of something that they'll experience or something that will happen after the show. And I, I said, if, if anybody is on stage as a smoker, the next time, because these guys, you know, even before the show, they were all huddled out on their, you know, their little patio area of their, of their lodge. People were chain smoking and stuff. And if any of you are a smoker, the next time you put a cigarette in your mouth, you go to take a drag, it'll taste like, you know, burning gasoline in your mouth. Hmm. So there was a, there was one woman on stage, you know, after the show, 
she goes out to the, you know, the patio. You've got a group of people that are following her because they want to see the reaction. So she takes out a cigarette, one of her cigarettes. She lights it up. She starts coughing and choking and gagging. And she's like, man, something's wrong with that cigarette. So she takes another one of her cigarettes, lights it up. Same thing, choking and gagging. And she's like, I don't know what's going on with my pack of cigarettes. So she bummed a cigarette from somebody else. She took a drag of that cigarette and it was the same thing. But her desire and her conditioning to smoke was so strong. She smoked that entire cigarette, even though the entire time she was choking and, you know, spitting and 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 gagging. So, I mean, so for her, you know, the desire to have that cigarette, the desire, the conditioning to smoke that cigarette was stronger than the fact that it tasted, you know, disgusting for her. And it was a painful experience. But for her, it was going to be more painful to not have the cigarette. Mm -hmm. So. It's unfortunate. Like the the mind can only do so much. But when you talk about things like chemical dependencies and and even just social norms, like sm- smoking for people is a social activity too. Like people yeah. people tend to forget that. Like that you know it, it's gotten it's changed a lot over the years. Now it, now it's vaping. All the teenagers in the bathrooms are vaping. But it, I find it interesting that like even though her mind was telling her one thing, her body was so conditioned to mm-hmm. to need to have that need that she wasn't able to stop herself. But for you, like after you, you quit comedy, you started doing stage hypnosis, Royal Caribbeans. I want to ask a little bit about your personal life. Like, yeah. obviously you made a huge change. Like it went from mm-hmm. this to this, you know, you mentioned some difficult relationships. You mentioned a divorce. What were some of the changes that you made in your life after discovering hypnosis? Well, the, you know, the thing for me, because of course I was, you know, hypnotizing people on stage and. Um, beginning to understand you know, what it was able to do. So obviously I started implement, implementing that in my own life, you know, doing, you know, self-hypnosis and, and, and daily meditation. And, you know, the, the interesting thing for me was that I saw, you know, my programming begin to shift, my thinking begin to shift, where I was actually, you know, believing in myself that I was able to accomplish something, that I was able to, you know, begin to make, you know, cross a certain threshold, you know, of, of income and seeing, you know, my success propel doing hypnosis came from obviously me being able to, you know, change my thinking about what I was, you know, what I was able to accomplish. And, you know, of course, my perspectives of relationships and what I thought, you know, I deserved obviously completely, you know, those old ideas were erased and, you know, I, I, wound up meeting, I can say literally, you know, the, you know, the woman of my dreams, my wife, Rochelle, former Mrs. Utah, first runner up, Mrs. America. I I throw that out there, but she, she is as brilliant as, you know, she is, is, is beautiful. And, you know, we met, I guess it was in 2012. We got married in 2016. And uh, I mean, it's, it's, has been the most amazing experience for me. There's been no drama. There's been no conflict, right? All the stuff that I had before, and being able to, because I was married previously twice before, right? And the, and the joke in my family is thir- three times a charm. You, you know, my, I've got my, my sisters, their third marriage, everything was great. But, but after things kind of went south was my second marriage. I'm like, I'm not doing this anymore, right? I'm cool to be a bachelor for the rest of my life. And, but then all of a sudden, you know, you meet somebody and then all of a sudden it clicks and you go, oh, this is why, you know, people choose to get married. This is what it means, you know, to have that you know, that feeling, you know, in your, in your heart for, you know, for somebody. And so combine that relationship has, you know, obviously expanded both of us, you know, where we've gone, where, you know, Rochelle was completely involved in everything that I do relative to the show. Uh, she actually went and uh, certified, you know, in hypnosis as well. So she does one-on-one, she works one-on-one with people. Oh wow! Um, but it's, it's a, it's a case where, you know, we're literally, I mean, we're together, you know, 90% of the time, you know, we're both home, you know, here work from home and, and, you know, that sort of thing. So, you know, we don't fight, we don't get on each other's nerves and, 
And, you know, she's a, she's a huge part of what I do relative to, you know, what I create on YouTube, as far as, you know, I can, I can know that her feedback is, is honest and authentic and, and I can be open to it, you know, relative to the scripts and, you know, how I go do about doing things. So, you know, I really was able to step into this partnership, you know, not just in, you know, love and, and then personal life, but, you know, professionally as well. So it's like, all of a sudden, everything just started to fire on all cylinders and, you know, I see myself sustained in happiness now where it's like one of the things, one of the themes that I share on my, you know, throughout some of my YouTube channels is, you know, people, people think that, you know, they need things. It's like when we say to somebody, you know, you make me upset or you make me angry, or I need you to do this, or I need you to do that. Well, really our relationships really only ever sustain us in what we already are inside, what we're already feeling inside. And so we don't need somebody else to make us feel a certain way. We're able to make our allow, you know, create those feelings, you know, for ourselves. And we have those feelings within ourselves, then our relationships, our friendships, you know, family, you know, loved ones, that sort of thing, then sustain us, you know, in, you know, in that happiness. So finding my inner happiness and my inner joy and my inner peace obviously was the biggest thing that then my world around me was able to reflect that back to me. Man, that's like, I'm, I'm like choked up. I usually don't get like flabbergasted during an interview. I'm just, you know, one of the things that just really resonated with me, my wife and I've been married now for two years and we had our COVID wedding and then we had our regular <laughs> wedding. So we, we joked that we got married twice and you know, it's funny the, my wife and I crossed paths dozens of times without knowing it before we even started dating. And our, our running joke is that the universe was waiting for us both to be ready for yeah. it. So yeah, like it's. I, it's true because, you know, it's funny because that's one of the things that, you know, that my wife said, well, why didn't we meet each other, you know, 25 years ago or whatever. But because we weren't the people then that, you know, that we are now. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, and it's like, you know, I have two kids with, you know, with my kid's mom. My, my wife has got four kids with, wow. you know, her kids, but they're, they're all, her kids are all raised and, you know, out of the house. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the interesting thing is, is, you know, I used to love, you know, I'm, I'm a big sci-fi guy and, you know, time travel and all, you know, I always used to think about, you know, if I could travel back in time and do this and do that and, you know, how much fun it would be. But now I look back and I go, man, if I were to travel back in time to do anything different, then I would, you know, kind of throw the space time continuum off and, you know, not have my kids. So it's like, I look back on everything within my life that all came together ideally you know, for me, every single thing going back to, you know, my childhood, it was like all these layers upon layers and, you know, all stacked up to, you know, to bring me to the point that, you know, that I am now. And, and, you know, that's what I'm so grateful for, but it's like, yeah, it's like you and your wife, it's like, you know, the universe was waiting for, you know, the right time and, and, and to, you know, bring synchronicity into everything. Yeah. I mean, like for me and my wife, I knew six months in, I was getting the ring. Like I, I knew yeah. it was, that was, you know, she was the one and now same thing. Very, we have a working relationship too, where she's the uh, producer of the shows. She has her own Instagram page where she does uh, book reviews and stuff like that. Every once in a while, I'll get her on to uh, the the podcast because she actually trained as a forensic interviewer for over a year. Oh, so wow. Yeah. So like, that would, that would be a very interesting I'd that would I'd love her to interview me sometime and let I'd uh, be curious to see how that goes. <laughs> I'm I'm already planning the the follow up interview like in my head because I kind of want to challenge myself by uh, watching some of your YouTube channel uh, videos for a few weeks and then following up with you again on another episode if you were you, interested. You, you can't you can't yeah that would yes but you can't fib to your wife at all she p- could figure you know everything oh, she, out. The the worst was <laughs> we're at dinner and I caught her interviewing me. And I, I'm, I, I, I'm, I have skills in, I'm training an interview too. So I caught it almost, you know, after a second, she said something like we were talking about something. She goes, tell me a little bit more about that. And I'm like, wait, what did you just say? She goes, I said, tell, <laughs> tell me a little bit more about that. I was like, are you interviewing me right now? We're at dinner. She's like, oh my God, I didn't even realize. I was like, you totally realized it. Get out of here. <laughs> and even, even more terrifying. She also has a psychology degree. So I have to be, uh, I have to be very aware of some of the things yeah. that I say. Yeah. <laughs> but so now we we keep talking about it. We keep mentioning it. I want to hear. I want you to tell all of our listeners about your YouTube channel because I feel like it'd be uh, really good for a lot of them who are dealing with certain aspects that they may need some help with. Yeah, yeah, and and it, it's one of those. It, 
it's a crazy thing because it happened by happenstance. And, you know, when you do a stage hypnosis, you know, there's always what they call, you know, back of the room merchandise, right? So you're doing your hypnosis show and you tell people, Hey, if you want to stop smoking, if you want to lose weight, stop stress, blah, 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 see me, you know, after the show. And I've got all these, you know, CDs that you can, you know, that you can purchase. And of course, you know, that was the model, you know, they were selling LPs back in the day. Then they were, you know, they were selling cassette tapes and, you know, then it became CDs. Well, you know, in the mid, you know, 2000s, obviously CDs started to become passe. People didn't have CD players anymore. Everything was, was digital. And so, you know, I was on these various, you know, Facebook groups and online groups for, you know, hypnotists and, you know, all these hypnotists are like, well, nobody's buying CDs anymore. Hey, maybe we could do thumb drives. And, you know, now they're talking about where can we get bulk thumb drives and we can put our material on thumb drives. We'll sell thumb drive to people. And so kind of I had it my idea, you know, in my head, instead of going out and creating thumb drives, doing all this stuff, I would put stuff on my website so people could download it. They could buy it and download it digitally. And so then I had the idea, well, maybe if I put some of my stuff on YouTube that people might find my content there and they'd want to go to my website and they'd buy it. It had never occurred to people would actually use YouTube as a platform right. to go to experience this content. And, you know, so I put some stuff up on there, you know, and I wasn't really, I, I wasn't really active on YouTube. I didn't do much. And, you know, I just put stuff on there and forgot about it. I wasn't checking things. Well, I had one particular video that really took off and it was a video, a hypnosis video to help people fall asleep. And so the thing about YouTube is that they're all dying that, you know, they want to dial everything down to a very specific, you know, niche. So the people that were interested in my YouTube channel were people that were interested in hypnosis to fall asleep. And so, of course, I was obviously interested in more topics than just, you know, falling asleep. So what I began doing was creating these long form hypnosis programs because people like to put something on to fall asleep to it and then have it continue to play during the night. Mm -hmm. So I would create, you know, you know, sleep hypnosis. It's kind of, an, I mean, sleep hypnosis, hypnosis, they're kind of interchangeable terms, but I was creating these programs that people could fall asleep. And then, you know, you actually pass through hypnosis bef before you fall asleep. It's like you go from your, your beta brainwave state, then you go down into an alpha and a theta, and then, you know, deltas when you're, you know, deep asleep, mm -hmm. but those alpha and theta brainwave states, you, they're, you're right there before you fall asleep. And those are where you're able to access the subconscious mind to be able to put in positive suggestions. So I would create these programs for people to fall asleep and download, you know, positive energy from the universe or shield yourself from, you know, negative people's, you know, energy or overcoming heartbreak, all these various different, you know, topics that were interesting to me, you know, kind of on a spiritual level to, you know, not just stop smoking or, you know, weight loss yeah. or, or whatever the case may be. And so consequently doing that, you know, my, my, you know, my channel, you know, my channel took off and that's, you know, that's where things got really interesting and really exciting for me. You know, I mean, never in my wildest dreams would I ever imagine that I, you know, would be a YouTube creator, but you know, it's like we talked about earlier about synchronicity. I mean, I was able to take everything that I learned relative to, you know, my, my, theater and film and, you know, my video training background, my writing background and, and hypnosis and, you know, kind of that performance element to be able to connect with people. And, it, you know, it all combined, you know, perfectly together to happen for me. That's awesome, man. Like I'm on your YouTube channel right now. A lot of, a lot of great sleep stuff, which is for me personally, I am a terrible sleeper. Like I, I yeah. heavily rely on your Z quills and stuff like that like, yeah, to, yeah. to an unhealthy level, just because my sleep schedule can sometimes be less than ideal. Yeah. Like the, uh, yeah. the other day when we were supposed to interview, I was actually up for 40 hours because of work. So Man. I went from Thursday at 4 AM to Friday night at 9 PM. Wow. That's insane. It, like talk about a spiritual moment. Like sometime around like five o'clock on Friday, I passed like some sort of normal state of mind and I was in some sort yeah. of super state. Like I, I had to go to an emergency union meeting for our department and I was just sitting there like like with this big dopey smile on my face, <laughs> just like barely like absorbing all of it, but at the same time just sitting there quietly, which is if I'm, like, you, I'm you, happy to be here with the union guys. I'm just whatever you want. Happy to be conscious right now. Yeah. But um 
so where would you where would you recommend somebody like like let's say me who is open to the idea of meditation and I I don't know I you don't know this I didn't say this I studied martial arts for about twenty five years and part oh, wow. of my part of my martial arts training was excessive not excessive was meditation and I I was really good at one point you know every morning I'd, I'd meditate for about thirty minutes I'd try and get another thirty before I went to bed the longest I ever did was a four hour meditation on a, a mountaintop near where we live. At from like 12 wow. o'clock at night to four. That was a, a life-changing experience for me. I've meditated in Korea. For, we were there for a week-long training session, and we, we did meditation in temples, and it was, it was very powerful stuff. But for somebody who's fallen off that wagon and who wants to get back on, where would you recommend I start? Well, you know, the, the nice thing about having, you know, the internet now, and we have access to so much, uh, you know, I tell people just look around for, you know, the subject matter that you're interested in mm -hmm. and, you know, experiment with, you know, whether it be different hypnotists or different programs, find something that resonates with you and, 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 and works for you. And, you know, you can just, you know, it's like going to the buffet, you can pick out the things that you like and, you know, avoid the things that you, you know, that you don't like. So, you know, for, you know, it's, you know, especially for the people with my channel, because, they like the long form. Most of my stuff are these eight hour programs. And it's interesting because I could put up an eight hour program and I, you know, I've got, you know, videos that get 3 million views, 2 million views, you know, a million views, you know, I'll make a 20 minute long, you know, meditation, I'll put it up and it gets no traction, you know, whatsoever, because obviously my channel is geared to that niche of, you know, sleep hypnosis, which I'm actually kind of in the works of creating a second channel that would be specifically for, you know, for shorter meditations, but right. just find a subject matter that you're interested in and, and take it for a test drive, you know, listen to something and, you know, whether it's something of mine or something of, you know, somebody else's, th that's the nice thing because it's like working a muscle. It's like going to the gym. Maybe you've never been there, but you start to, you know, work out, you get a little stronger, you get a little more adept, you get a little more proficient. And it's the same way with, you know, with hypnosis and, and meditation that, you know, even if, because look, there was a time I never thought in a million years that I could ever be hypnotized. And then all of a sudden I could experience that mm -hmm. and experiencing that is, you know, it's not like, you know, you're, you're, you're losing control or you're, you know, you're a weak minded person. It's just the opposite. You feel so empowered and you feel so good. And one of the things that I, I would kind of joke about with people is, you know, hypnosis, the ability to experience hypnosis is, is directly correlated with somebody's IQ. So if somebody's got like a, a, an average to above average IQ, they're receptive to hypnosis. In fact, the higher the IQ, the more receptive somebody can be and tap into that state of mind. So, you know, I always laugh when you get these big alpha males that are like, ah, I can't be hypnotized. And I'm like, well, thank you for admitting that, you know, you have a low IQ. I appreciate that. So the thing is, is though, that even if it's something that you've never done, just start to do it and do it. And then you'll just, you'll be able to experience the results and your, you know, your mind will grow stronger. That's awesome, man. So we're running a little low on time. I like to always end with my favorite question. I know you kind of alluded to it already, but I'd like to hear a little bit more. Okay. Ask away. What is in the future for you? What are what are some projects that you're working on? What are we going to see in the next six months, the next year from uh, John Moyer? You know, it's interesting because I've I've gotten the thing is, is I, you know, you, you don't want to become complacent. And, you know, for me, it's, it's been easy, you know, these last couple of years go, man, I don't have to leave my house. You know, I can just hang out and, and make, you know, make recordings, but at the same time, Oop. we lost them. I do, like my computer literally just, uh, it just went down here. No so, worries. But you're still rolling, right? Still rolling. And you're just, are you just doing audio? Just audio. Luckily. All right. Okay. <laughs> Well, here's what we can do. I could just answer the question and hopefully it'll, you know, we can make it sound like it's okay. I'll play the end um, game. I'll, I'll figure it out. Don't worry. It's all good. <clears throat> but, you know, what, what is ahead for me is the fact that, you know, I, going to theater and film school, and I've actually had a few independent films produced. I've had a few screenplays produced. And those were always comedy because that was the thing, you know, that interested me. But now since I've got much more you know i've got a more ethereal new age perspective about life there's some there's some topics that are much more you know fascinating for me and you know the buddy that i did my previous films with he's like dude when are you going to write a script let's make another movie so i'm actually two-thirds of the way through you know a feature script it's kind of a it's kind of a sci-fi thriller you know that kind of deals with 
the nature of reality. So it, it's kind of exciting for me because I'm, you know, I was passionate about comedy, retired from comedy, not really that passionate about comedy anymore, but I am more passionate about, you know, some of the, you know, the, the more crazier elements of, of life or the more philosophical elements about spirituality or, or, you know, the nature of reality. So I'm kind of taking my interest now and, you know, jumping back into the, into the screenwriting business. Oh man. Now, now I need to do a follow-up with you even more because, <laughs> you know, we have our film podcast. We do a lot of film reviews on our website and man, to hear that you're working on a screenplay, like you might be one of the coolest guys that I've ever talked to. Like just, well, and that's not even me blowing smoke. That's just me. Like just impressed if anything. Cause you know, for me, for me, who's trying to create a career out of podcasting to hear such a great success story on your end, it, like it's, it's inspiring and it's empowering for somebody like me. And I really hope our listeners uh, enjoy uh, some of your material. So how can people find – And, and, and oh, real hey. quick, though, the, the one thing, you know, because you're – like you say, you know, like I want to make a career out of podcasting. And, you know, and the one thing that I'm really, really passionate about telling people is that there's absolutely nothing, you know, that can stop you from doing what you prefer to do, you know, other than, you know, yourself. Don't listen to anybody else. Just, you know, follow what you're passionate about, what you believe in about yourself. And, you know, that was kind of the driving force, you know, for me for my whole life. I knew that I wanted to be, you know, in the entertainment industry. I wanted to be creative, you know, as a kid. And kind of an interesting thing with, you know, with my dad is that, you know, when I was, you know, 13 years old and said, hey, what do you think about me going into the, you know, making movies and the entertainment industry. And, you know, my father said, hey, I think it's another one of your stupid childish ideas. <laughs> and that for me was one of the big driving forces because it was like, F you, I'm going to prove to you that I'm going to prove you wrong. So and that's the thing when I tell anybody is, you know, especially when I talk to young people, if you want to do something, man, you can do it. And don't let anybody tell you that you can't. That's awesome, man. I love it. So uh, if anybody wanted to find some of your material, where would be the best place to find it? Find me, you know, on YouTube, just look me up, John Moyer Hypnosis. Um, or if you just type in John Moyer, you're either going to find me or the uh, bassist from the heavy metal band. Just, you'll probably be able to tell the difference. And or my website, johnmoyer.com, that's got all the portals to all the portals to my 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 social media. The, the, you know, the funny thing is, is you know, he and I both follow each other on, you know, on Twitter, but oh, I can't awesome. tell you how many times Twitter and Instagram people accidentally, you know, tag me or hyperlink me um, thinking it's the, you know, the bass player. And like six months ago, I was hanging out one night, get a notification that says, George Lopez mentioned you on Twitter. I'm like, what George? L and I look and I'm like, it was the George Lopez. He apparently was at some place where um the bass player for disturbed you know john moyer was going to come out and play so he's you know he wrote john moyer about to take the stage and i was like thanks for the shout out but i'm not the that john moyer i guess he was just uh down with the sickness that night <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> oh man thank you john thank you so much for joining me tonight i really appreciated it it was just it was eye-opening it was inspiring and we'd love to have you back on the show at some point anytime I, i'd love to be yeah it'd be interesting to you know, have your wife interview me sometime and, oh, you know, gonna, see if we can, we can both do mental gymnastics on each other. I'm going to tell her you said that she might take it as a challenge though. So I don't know if you're <laughs> ready for it, <laughs> but uh, John, thank you so much. And you have a good rest of your night. All right. Absolutely. Brother. Thank you so much. Take care. See ya. Man, what a cool dude. Like, oh God, th this is why I love doing what I do. And I love being able to, to just interact with people who like, to, to quit your job and, re and retire from it and start off something that you're super passionate about and then create a, a huge following. Like I'm looking at John's stuff. He's got some of his videos have millions of views and I just like, he's a really cool dude and I really want to get him back on the show. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope you found it inspiring. I hope you guys check out his stuff, John Moyer on uh, YouTube. That's his biggest uh, draw for you guys. And just let them know that we sent you. And I want to thank all you guys for listening today. As always, I'm Paul. If you want more content, you can find us at themisfitfaction.com. You can also find us on Facebook, MF Uncensored. Uh, you can find our Facebook group, the Misfit Faction Media Network. Just uh, request an invite, and we will make sure that you get into that. You can also find us on YouTube, the Misfit Faction Media Network, or you can find us on Instagram, the Misfit Faction. Thank you guys for listening, and we'll see you next time.